Welcome back to Mongolia. If you watch some of my recent videos on Mongolia, you would have seen bright blue skies, beautiful sceneries. But this video, I'm afraid the weather is not going to be like that. This was in uh, mid-June and the fishing season has just started and you can see <laughs> the sky is all grey and gloomy. It's an ammo. But there's fishing. The weather is not always uh, on our side. That's something we have absolutely no control over. On a tree weight. But if you look at it from another <laughs> perspective, that's what makes uh, fishing more interesting. You know? Oh! It's gone. <laughs> oh no. Right. Very light leader. Ah, making a mess. Right. Ah. Check this out. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. But it's great to be outdoors. We make the best of what we have. And one of the great things is when you're faced with this kind of situation, you try to be creative and try different things. And sometimes you get surprising results and learn new things. It's one of the great things I love about fly fishing. But before the fishing, let's go back to the beginning of the trip. I hope you guys will join me as I take you through our journey and through the countryside of Mongolia. These are some amazing sites. And if you want to find out what gear that I pack, some of the things that I use, the flies used on this trip, just let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to share the information with you guys. And as always, if we have anyone new on the trip, we will almost always bring them to this place here where they have this giant statue of Genghis Khan for Genghis Khan for a pre-trip experience. Everyone who comes to Mongolia for the first time always find it a fascinating experience. The things they see, the people they meet, the culture, the food and so much more. So far, I've never met anyone who doesn't want to come back again. Along the way, we'll be passing by some small villages where you get to see how the, some real Mongolians live. And these are semi-wild horses. This is where we get off the smooth tarmac road and we begin the bumpy stretch <laughs> to the wilderness. <laughs> Livestock are pretty common sight as much of the Mongolian people still live a very nomadic lifestyle. A pit stop and the Mongolian step for a quick break before we resume our journey again. We have arrived at our overnight stop. This is a tourist camp. This one we have just reopened after the cold winter. Mongolia is a pretty big country, so the alternative to traveling by road and getting to more remote places in the country will be on small planes and helicopters. A quick look inside the Mongolian girl, or some people will call it a yurt. Check out those clouds, the sky and the scenery. The next morning, we did a bit of a warm-up casting before we had breakfast and headed out. Well, the weather certainly wasn't looking too promising, you know. But uh, we're still hoping for the best. We had to come to this uh, river crossing instead of the usual place where we cross by just driving through the river, you know. Because there's been a lot of rain lately and the river has risen a lot. So cars are unable to drive through the river. Although the travelling part can sometimes be long and tiring, I always enjoy the uh, adventure, you know, because I find often it becomes a memorable part of the trip. So yeah, everyone should try to enjoy it. Well, the rain certainly is falling. Here we are, stopping by the Ovos. I hope I pronounce it correctly, Ovos. Where we just stop and put some stones and walk around it three times <laughs> for, you know, luck and safe travel. You know. And then we arrive at the our cabin just after lunch. And the first thing we did was uh, hit, walk down to the river. And it turned out to be a 
great start actually, considering the way the sky looked when we were traveling. But I have, uh, I might have uh, spoken too soon, as you see later. So this is Ben, his first trip here, and first couple of cars, and he's on to a decent drop. So, and then we yeah, went back for a quick truck. bite at the cabin. It's almost like, and then in the evening at six something, we were out fishing again and catching more fish. So it was a great afternoon upon arrival. Everyone was having fun. Timon, Timon. Timon? Nice, nice And even when we, uh, after dinner, we even went out again to try out lung in the dark. A bit cold, but uh, no catch in the night. So we'll see you guys the uh, next morning. Good morning, everyone. You can see the guys coming out from the cabin. <laughs> as Ben <laughs> and we're cheerful as we should be, you know, when we get to be in places like this. After breakfast, we're off to our first Sister fishing ground. So you begin by drinking the blood. And Soto onto a nice fish. We have a good fight. It's one of the uh, locals that stopped by for a quick chat. And I found some fish here. I'm using a tree weight setup uh, made out of the Winston. Damn, I forgot what's the name of the, the model of the rod. Anyway, it's a tree weight. And then I'm using a Orvis Baton Q2 reel and a real trout line. Alright, so the model for the Winston rod is actually called the Winston Passport. This is a Lennox trout. The average size that we catch are um, between 40 to 50 centimeter. This one is caught on a clean hammer fly. And watch carefully as the fly will come out and the fish bolts off. As I'm using a barbless hook, and once you lose tension on the line, there's a possibility of that happening. I actually had a lot of fun using this tree weight setup on this trip because it's so light and uh, so sensitive, you know. Ah, just missed the eat here. Again. The only problem using this tree bit, we're fishing often in uh, big wide open spaces and it can get quite windy sometimes and you got to basically watch the size of the flies that you cast, you know, nothing too heavy and uh, nothing too wind resistant. Well, I guess they are spooked now. This is at another spot. So I'm using a fairly light tippet. And I just got to lay the fish more carefully. Back here, rod and reel. <laughs> and you can see here the, how high the water has come up. Normally, we have this rocky part here. 
would be the river bank. Another nice Lenox trout. Let's have a quick picture and we'll release it. You don't have phone reception, right? Mm -mm. Back no, in I'm the I'm cabin I'm on, for I'm dinner? Yeah, I'm on. I'm still on plane mode. And then yeah, this is wow. the next day. So all these flowers will have just started to bloom. It's like how the saying goes, you know. Don't forget to stop to smell the roses. So if you care to look, you see all these pretty flowers sprouting all everywhere. So we are on our way to our fishing spot for the day. And it's a wet and windy day. Because of the conditions, we have slightly less options where to fish. Because all the rivers are not in their ideal conditions. Water are deeper. Rivers are flowing quicker water temperature are lower and fish are possibly not where they would usually be. What do you see? So we here we are walking hmm? along the meadows, enjoying the sights. You like this stuff? Eh? Ah, I do keep them. I'll show you some photos. Your river crossing, so remember, guys, keep yourself fit always. Take care of your health. Exercise often, you know. You use all these fishing trips to do this to keep yourself motivated if you have to. That's actually what I do. There's so much to experience and so many places to see you know, around our beautiful world. I found this nice stretch of the river here with some log jam by the river bank and a nice river running beside it. <laughs> I would uh, swear there will be fish here, you know, but made a few casts, a few drift, nothing. So the conditions are tough because of the rainfall that we've been having, you know. I haven't seen much of the sun as well, so the fishing definitely has been affected. And uh, this early part of the trip, we are sort of like getting a feel of the place and trying to solve the puzzle. You know. So today we are having a rather slow first part of the day. It's already 3 plus in the afternoon now. We stop for our lunch break. But not to worry, as the day is not over yet, we still got a couple of hours as the sun sets at sometime around 8 p.m. here, this time of the year. So you never know how the rest of the day might turn out. This part of the country that we're fishing in is a lot more greener than uh, some other parts. An interesting fact about the Great Mongolian Steppe, which is also sometimes called the Mongolian Manchurian Steppe, they are among one of the four such uh, majestic places in the world. You know? So you have the Mongolian steppe, and then you have the Kazakhstan steppe, and you have the Rocky Mountain steppe in the United States uh, Midwest, and also the famous Patagonia steppe. So yeah, just being here is truly can be breathtaking. So it looks like our luck has changed. We found some fish at this spot here. Which is a bend in the river and that slim with a fish and then shower later another fish so the afternoon is already looking much better <laughs> and we're getting some sun here so that's a good sign as the morning has been really gloomy and there's some rain and wet 
So, look at how beautiful the late afternoon is here. An absolutely stunning place to be standing at, to be fishing at. Him. And I'm on to a fish. What could this be? A leno? A namu trout. It's a leno trout. And this is also when I start to discover that a little mouse fly that I decided to tie on and try could end up being a game changer on this uh, tougher than usual conditions. Yeah! Finally! <sighs> One nice one is all you need. That's the end of another day oh. of fishing. Stay tuned for the next episode as we do more discovery and I catch even more fish with the little mouse fly.